Hi, this is James at knowthen.com. In this episode, we'll look at creating models for Koa.js. More specifically, we'll be creating a functioning user model. We'll design our model using a test-first approach, or test-driven development. Then we'll store our users in RethinkDB, a cool new open source database. And lastly, we'll look at how to properly store a user's password. Let's start off by creating a package.json file to help us manage our dependencies. We'll do this by issuing the command npm init, which will ask us a series of questions and create our package.json file based on our answers. We'll go ahead and give our project the name training. It asks us for a version following the semantic versioning specification. This is a three-part number separated by decimals. The first number represents a major version. The second number is a minor version. And the last number represents a patch version. We will set ours at 0.1.0, .0, a good starting point. For the description, I'll say creating user model. The entry point can be whichever file we deem appropriate. Index.js is commonly used. And we'll be using Mocha for testing. We won't be putting this in Git for now. You can enter some keywords for discoverability. I'll enter my name and a license. OK, looks good. As you can see, we have a nice clean package.json file, which contains our app's metadata and eventually will contain our dependencies. Now we can start by creating a user test file in a test folder. I'm going to go ahead and create the test folder. Then I'll create and open a file called user.js. I'll start by pulling in the Node.js assert module, as well as Comoca, which will allow me to use generator functions in my tests. Now the assert module comes with Node.js, but I'll need to install Comoca. So I'll go ahead and do that with npm using the save-dev option, which will store the dependency in the dev dependencies section in the package.json file. I'm going to call the describe function, passing in a description and the function which will contain my tests. So I want to be able to create an object that will represent a user. I'm going to pull in our user model, which doesn't exist yet, and then we'll write our first test. So I'll call the it function passing in a description should create a user. Then I'll pass in a generator function. And within that generator function, I'll create a variable user and assign it to a new user object. Then I'll assert that the type of the user is an object. Let's run our test using Mocha with the harmony flag and the test fails as we haven't even created our user model file yet. So let's do that. First I'll create our models directory. Then I'll open our user.js file in Sublime. So I'm going to create a variable for user and assign it the function that takes one parameter called properties. And then I'll export that user variable. OK, let's rerun our test, and it passes. I'd like to be able to pass an object to the user function or the constructor and have it assign the attributes of the past object to the user object. So let's create a test for that scenario. We'll create a couple of variables, username and user. Then we'll set the username to James. Next, we'll instantiate a user object passing in the username. Lastly, we'll check if the user.username equals the original username variable. All right, let's run our test to see if it fails. And it does fail. Now let's implement this. I want to use Lodash's assignment function. First, we need to install it using npm with the save option. Using the save option, we'll add Lodash as a required dependency to our package.json file. Next, I'll pull Lodash into my file. And lastly, I'll use the assign function. All right, rerunning our test, and it passes. I want to be able to persist my user to my database at some point. And when a new record is saved, it should have an ID property assigned to it, which represents the primary key for that record. In my test, I'll create a new user, then call the save method, and then I'll check to see that an ID exists. And running our test, and it fails as expected. Now let's implement the save method. There's going to be quite a bit of setup to get this test to pass. I'm going to be using RethinkDB for my database. If you want to get an introduction to RethinkDB, check out my screencast on creating middleware.
To get a connection to the database, I'll use a module called RethinkDB Dash. RethinkDB Dash sets up a connection pool, so I should really only create one instance of it in my app. The way I'll do that is by creating a local module in the utils folder called RethinkDB.js. I'll start by installing RethinkDB Dash using npm. Next, I'll pull RethinkDB into my file as well as a config file that we haven't yet made. I'm going to create a variable r that will store our RethinkDB Dash object. Then I'll export a function that can take some options that I'll pass into RethinkDB Dash. If my variable r hasn't had a value assigned to it, I'll use the past options or the config files options as a default. Then I'll instantiate the RethinkDB Dash object and return it. Let's create the config file I referenced above. I'll create the folder, then I'll open config.js in Sublime. Then we'll create a config object and assign the RethinkDB connection settings and export the config object. Now that we have our connection set up, I want to create the database and table that we'll be using. I kind of like using a controlled migration process, so we'll be using the module migrate. First, I'll install it using npm with the global option. Next, I'll create a couple migration files using the new migrate tool. Running these two commands creates two new files in the migrations folder. Now I need to go into those files and define my migration. I'll start by pulling in my rethinkdb dash object and we'll use the config file we created a few moments ago. Next, I'll call dbcreate and dbdrop respectively to define this migration. I'll pass the next parameter into the run method, which is the callback. Now I'll set up the add user migration in a similar way. Now that our migrations are set up to create the database and table, I will run migrate on the command line. Now we can finally get back to the test we were working on, saving the user record. I'll start off by pulling in the local RethinkDB module and calling the returned function so that we can connect to the database. Now let's write our save method. Now save could mean an insert or it could mean an update. So the question is, how do I know when to do one versus the other? Well, when we save a record, we'll receive back a primary key that we'll call ID. So we could say if the ID property exists, then we should probably do an update. Otherwise, it should probably be an insert. I'll start off by defining a schema virtual constant that will list the fields that I will persist to the database. Next, I'll use the lodash pick method to pull the fields I'm interested in out of the object. Then, if the ID exists, I'll do an update. Otherwise, I'll do an insert. After the insert, I will assign the returned primary key to the ID property. All right, I'm going to create another virtual constant for the table name and use that in place of the user's strings down below. Okay, I think we can finally run our test. Cool, it worked. Now that we're doing integration tests, I want to put the database into a known state prior to testing. I'm going to go ahead and delete the user's table before each test. So I make a delete call in the before each hook. Our users model should allow us to look up users by their username. So let's write a test for that scenario. I'll create a few variables, user, found user, username, and password. Then I'll assign the username and password, and then pass them into the constructor as an object. Next, I'll call save, at which point the user should be persisted to the database. Now I'm going to call the findByUsername function, which doesn't yet exist, passing in the username. Lastly, I'll assert that the found username equals the username variable. And running our test, and it fails. Now let's implement our findByUsername function. I'm going to create a few variables, results, criteria, and user. I'll set my criteria to an empty object. Then I'll set the username property of the criteria to the past username. Next, I'll specify which table I wish to run the query against, passing in the criteria to the filter. Then I'll run the query. If a result is returned and it's an array with a length of 1, 
Then I'll assign the first element of the array to the user. Then I'll return the user. Let's run our test again, and it passes. Now at this point, we've committed a big developer sin. We're saving the password as plain text. We don't want to do that. So let's write a test for that. It needs to be a secure hash of the password. I'm going to create some variables, assign the username and password, instantiate the user, save the user, and then check that the saved password doesn't match the original password. Running our test fails. Now let's implement our password hashing. It's important to use a hashing algorithm that incorporates a salt to protect against rainbow table attacks and is adaptably slow by design to protect against brute force attacks. We'll use bcrypt, which is suitable for this purpose. We're going to need to install a bcrypt module. I will install co-bcryptjs using npm. Next, I'll pull the module into my file. OK, next let's create a method called hash password that will convert our plain text password into a hash. It's pretty simple. I'll generate a salt by calling gen salt and passing in a number that represents the number of rounds the module will go through the hash of the data. 10 is a reasonable number. Next, we'll call the hash function, passing in the plain password and the generated salt. OK, so this works, but we really only want to call this function when a new password is assigned. If we were to accidentally hash an already hashed password, well, things wouldn't work. So we need to figure out a way of determining if the password needs to be hashed. There are a few ways we could do this, but we're going to use the define property function, which allows us to have something like setters and getters in other languages. It should make sense after you see it. I'm going to go ahead and write an init function that will get called from the constructor. In the init function, I'm going to define a password property with get and set methods. When a new password is set, I'll also set a property called new password to true. This will be what we use to determine if the password should be hashed or not. To do this, I'll call the define property method, passing in the object I want to apply the property to, as well as the property name. For the get function, I will return this dot underscore password, kind of a private variable by convention. In the set function, I'll assign the underscore password, but I will also set the new password to true. Now I'll go ahead and call the init function from the constructor. Now let's tweak our hash password function to check if this dot new password is true and only then hash the password as well as setting the this.newPassword to false. OK, so in the save method, we can call the hash password method. OK, now back to our test. And it passes. We're going to implement one more thing for our user model. There needs to be a way to check if a given password is the user's password. So onto our test. Well, actually, we're going to create two tests this time, one that will check a matching password and one that will check a failing password. I'll create a few variables, user, username, and password. Then we will assign them values and create a new user. Next, we will save the user. Our assertion will call the isPassword method, passing in the password to check. The second test will be almost identical, except I will expect the isPassword function to return false when I pass in the wrong password. I'm just going to copy and paste the prior test and change the assert statement. OK, running our test and it fails. Let's implement our isPassword method. It's really pretty simple. Our bcrypt module has a compare function which takes two parameters, the password and the hash, and returns a Boolean value indicating if it was a match or not. Now let's run our test again, and they pass. There are a few more things that should be done to this model, such as creating a find function and a delete function and adding some validation. Adding those additional things are fairly trivial, so we'll go ahead and conclude at this point. I hope you found this helpful. Please consider joining my mailing list so I can notify you when new screencasts are available. Thank you. Goodbye.